Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to this series of short tutorial videos. In this series, I'm going to show you how you can use Ableton Live alongside the pro stems and multi tracks available from worshipbackinband.com. Ableton Live is an incredibly versatile and powerful piece of software, and the combination of this and the professionally produced stems allow you to cover from missing musicians, allow you to fill out your sound with textures that aren't usually available in a live setting, and also become tighter as a band and be more slick in your, in your playing together. So what I'm going to do in this first video is just show you the brief overview of Ableton, where the main controls are, how to load a track, and then this, the videos will go from there. So this is the main view on Ableton. Um, so let's go and load our first track. Let's click on File. Let's click on Open Live Set. And then on my desktop, I've got some Ableton sessions available, which I've downloaded already. And I'm going to open up You Alone Can Rescue, and I'm going to click on the ALS file. I don't want to save what I've been doing beforehand. And there we go. So Ableton has two main views. Uh, and when this loads, it loads in what's known as the arrangement view. So the arrangement view is uh, the view that will be familiar to you if you've used any kind of music program before. And it's a timeline of various tracks going from bar one to the end of the song. You can see that down here we've got intro, lead vocal, BVs, acoustic. They're all the different instrument tracks. So let me just show you around some of the controls so you know how to navigate your way around Ableton. So firstly, we've got this little unfold track button next to each of the instruments. If I click the lead vocal, you'll see that the lead vocal comes in on verse. And here's the actual recording of the lead vocal. Next to that, we've got a big yellow button. And this yellow button basically activates the track. If I press that, the track won't appear in the mix. If I click that, the track will play. Next to that, we've got a solo button. And next to that, a record button for when we're recording our own tracks later on. At the bottom of all the tracks, we've got a couple of master controls. So we've got the one that shows the input and output. We've got the one that hides or shows the AV return tracks. The one that shows or hides the mixer tracks. And one for delay that we won't really use. There's another view to Ableton, which is known as a session view. And we can act activate that view by clicking the tab button on our keyboard, or by using these buttons up here. There's arrangement, and there's session. Session view is the view that most DJs would use if using Ableton Live and can also be used for running clicks, multi-tracks and loops and I'll show you that in subsequent videos. The main thing we'll want to be using this view for though is accessing this mixer at the bottom to be able to mix the tracks as far as the volumes if we want to play around with volumes easily and also to route the audio in various places and I'll show you that in just a second. Let's go back to arrangement view. What we've also got is if we click into any of these individual tracks, so let's click into lead vocal, it brings up this box at the bottom. This box at the bottom allows us to manipulate the audio and play around with a few settings a little bit more. So we might want to transpose, we might want to play with a gain, we might want to warp it. Warping is Ableton's time-stretching um, piece of software that's built in, which allows us to play with either the tempo or transposing the song without affecting its original pitch or its original timing. So, for example, we could take a song up a number of semitones without actually making the song faster. Uh, we can actually lock it to the same tempo. We'll look at that a little bit more in another video. So let's close those two boxes, take us back to our main page again. Okay, down this side over here, we've got a number of um, other boxes. So let's open up the Hide View button. And the first one at the top here is called Live Devices. The Live Devices is a series of uh, audio effects, instruments, MIDI effects that you might want to apply on top of some of the audio or MIDI that you've already got. For example, let's add some compressor and let's add that to the lead vocals. We can drag compressor over, drop it on lead vocals and there's compressor then on that track. And we can gradually build up a number of effects. So we could also put, um, let's find some reverb for example. There we go, we can put some reverb on there as well. Now as these are professionally produced tracks and they've already been incredibly well mastered, I don't need any of that so I can quickly Simply click them and click backspace and take them back out again. The next box is down. Um, one, two, and three are the ones that you really want to use. And these allow you to quickly navigate to folders on your computer. So one, for me, is at the moment, is taking me to my music folder where all my Ableton stuff is. Uh, number two is taking me into the 10,000 Reason project and so on. Great, let's close out of that one. Along the top bar, we've got some transport controls. So we've got a tap tempo button to allow us to tap in the tempo. The next button allows us to type in the tempo, so this is typed in at 76 BPM. We can put the time signature in here, and we can activate Ableton's inbuilt met metronome. Now all of the tracks that you download 
from worshipbackingband.com come with their own click track and cue track, but you can also add Ableton's own metronome should you choose to. This next box here shows you the uh, arrangement position, so we're at bar one and so on, and then we've got play, stop and record as our main transport controls. This next box is quite important. This is the quantization menu, um, and for our purpose I would suggest you leave this at one bar. What this means is later on in other videos, if we decide to arrange on the fly and we decide to press the control that would take us back to the chorus, for example, that quantization menu will tell us that if we press the button, it will wait to the end of that bar, and then on the next one, it'll jump back to the start. Two more controls to show you across this top. We've got one for key map and one for midi map. Now, we'll cover these in more detail in another video, but let me give you a quick overview. Key map allows us to assign numbers or letters on a standard computer keyboard to any of the um, buttons or controls that are currently covered in orange. So if we press it, it goes orange, we can select them. For example, let's allocate a P for play to the play button. So let's click on the play button and press the number P, and you'll see that P comes up there. Let's put an S for stop. Let's put an M on the metronome, so we click on the metronome and press M. And then down the side, let's allocate an L for turning on and off the lead vocal or a K for turning off the main keys part. And that's enough for now. So let's come back out of that and press P, and you hear that the track starts playing. Piano, two, now let's say that I want to add in Ableton's metronome on top. I'll press M for metronome, and you'll see that the metronome came on. Let's turn the metronome off again by pressing M, and let's turn the keys off by pressing K. And we're into verse one. Now let's decide we don't want the lead vocal. I can press L. Bring the keys back in by pressing K, and finally stop the track by pressing S. That's a really quick, you get the idea, a really quick overview of how to map keys to various functions. You can do exactly the same with MIDI. By pressing MIDI on here, we can assign a MIDI to any part of this. So just as a quick demo, if I was to click the stop button here, and I've got a MIDI foot controller um, plugged into my computer, I can press the button that I want to allocate to stop and it'll assign a stop button to here. There we go, there's a MIDI button, and the MIDI notes has come up there which is allocated to the stop button. If I press MIDI again, I can come out of those controls. That's part one of the overview of Ableton. Um, go and have a look at part two, and I'll show you how to use preferences and how to route some audio in different directions.